Welcome back. And today we are joined with one of my old friends here who's been doing some amazing work. She's influenced a lot of artists here in the UK and also she's worked with some key people. Like last week we did show Peter Minshew. Some of you made a lot of comments about that. And this particular artist is also worked with the Peter Minshew. And she's, apart from being an artist, she's also a leader. So we're going to talk with her about what she's been doing, what she's been up to, how COVID is affected her, and also what her organization is doing because most people know it from a different angle so i would like people to understand which is so ladies and gentlemen ali pretty hi ali hi thanks lovely mm. to be here thank you yeah it's been a while so mm -hmm. i think last time we actually uh spoke with each other or did stuff was when you used to hit uh, uh which is a long time ago isn't it Kinetica, mm -hmm. Kinetica, and then and ended up. I think last time I saw you just moved into your space, uh, into your new space in um, uh, what Thurrock. do you call? Huh? In Perfleet, in Thurrock. Yes, you had moved to Sarak. That was the last time I saw you here. So, what have you been up to, and uh, how is it going? Oh, it's been amazing. It's been uh, six years now. So, um, we moved to Thurrock because we had. It's an amazing studio. It's massive, so I can do really big silk designs. And since then, I've been starting a walking festival. So it's called T100, and it's walking, talking, and making. And we've been making these really large flags. It's kind of like slow carnivals. We walk in the landscape, yeah. and with people, people who's designed their flags and their stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Ali. So anyway, I think my experience with you, the most exciting experience I ever had with you was when we went to Calcutta and uh, there was a carnival there. And also, as I say, I think the costumes that were made, I think why it's very relevant to Jankanu is that everything there was very, very natural. We used natural material, not, not just natural as in just cardboard. We actually went, I think some of the structures that Cow did with the, I can't remember his name, was Ashish. all actual, Ashish, Rashish? Mm -hmm. yeah it was actual stuff which we cut and then make some form and so on so that was very exciting what's your memory of of this uh, event oh well as you know it's also really really special for me because um i've been going to calcutta for many years and i think when i went to trinidad it was the yeah. first time i really understood that that trinidad had this um asian population and that i could really see how like ashish's work with the wire bending and the shola it was really influential in the way that the carnival costumes are designed in India. So I really wanted to make that awareness that there was an Indian influence in carnival and in Caribbean carnival. And then we were invited back to take it back to Kolkata. So for me, it was that coming full circle, which kind of in a way mm. is what Dean Shuru means. It's, it's day break, things go round and round. Mm. And so I could give Kolkata and India was a place that had inspired me to become an artist in the first place because of all its wonderful festivals and because of the art on the street. And this was a way in which I could uh, bring something back to that community, uh, which is very special to me. And that, that has been a long lasting relationship, uh, which continues. Uh, you know, what I really enjoy about this or what I thought was magical, because, you know, we're making uh, the film with um, Comrade uh, Pato. Pato. Pato, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is one to do with this particular image that's there, this big structure in that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I learned when I was in India, really. I didn't even know it's like the Pasha. He, he makes this stuff as well with the, the other stuff that he makes um, religiously. But what was mm. very exciting and moving for me is watching Carl Gabriel work with him and them speaking with each other. And yet none of them could speak his English. I always say to Carl, look, the other guy eats curry and Carl was eating pizza and they were communicating without any sort of understanding each other's language. I mean, that's always been my head. Yeah, I mean, that was was the most amazing relationship. And um, like Ashish, just before uh, we did Ding True, Ashish was just one of those regular guys that makes some dresses for the goddesses. And he'd work with children. Uh, and then when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, those would make such brilliant carnival headdresses. Please can you make me 250? So we kind of had, I designed Deep Drew for London and I asked him to do those 250 headdresses, which was like a massive order for him. And then we got him to come to Notting Hill and then Carl came back to Trin uh, to India. And so his, this artist, Ashish, his concept of his own art was completely changed. Mm. And he, after he worked with Carl, he did much more three dimensional structures because it's essentially the wire bending. And so he's now become uh, the top, he's become really famous 
uh, and because he does much more innovative designs. And so he's actually built a studio on the top of his roof and oh. his business has really expanded as a result of that project. Wow. Yeah, no, because I really enjoyed that and that was really brilliant. Um, so, I mean, the, you went there with a lot of artists. I mean, did any of them actually end up with something that came out of having been in, in, um, in India? Um, well, they all tell me it was one of the best experiences of their life, um, yeah. including Carl. And uh, I know that Helen Davenport, who did these costumes here on this film, actually, um, yeah. I think she was being very influenced by it. Um, mm. And I think it was just they probably felt the way that I did, that you could see all of this art and creativity is on the street. It's so much part of everybody. Everybody's an artist and the aesthetic is, is everywhere there. So I think mm. it, it probably did have quite a big influence. Right. Um, and actually, um, we went back in 2017 with my community from Thorock. So yeah. we made um, 26 metre high flags for this project called Silk River. And we went back and I took 18 people from Essex to Kolkata. And, and that's had a massive, massive impact on their lives as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff you've done in India, but for now, being Mr. Music Man himself, and also in terms of Jankanu, we are not really at the moment, it's mainly acoustic stuff. And uh, this was also, you know, we remember we did that video with Pata. I also did this one as my own video. And uh, Ali, I'm sorry, but this is my best video. But I, we, I couldn't work out why this has been a best video because I just cut it together on the night in Calcutta. I didn't actually do proper editing. But I just realized mm. why I like it. It's because it's live music. There's no thing blended in it. It's just pure raw. I don't know if you've seen this mm. video. I can play it to you now. The sound is just like whatever is playing there. I think that's what actually made it for me. Oh, sorry. See what I mean? Wow. Mm. Pure raw, just like really you can hear the drum as it's being played and so on. And for me, I think as, a, as an artist, a musician, that was really what made it. But as I say, it took me two years to work out why I preferred this particular video than to the one which is professionally edited. Then it worked mm -hmm. out that because the other one, we're putting blending in some different music. But this one is just like what you see is exactly what you get, which is what Jankan is about. Now, I was going to ask you really, because the thing is, the, the, when you started Kinetica, it was everything. You had music in it, your design. Then you moved now, then you ended up like the design is a separate thing to the music. And how much, how much is, is the design, how much do you use music in what you're doing now? I mean, or do you go back and get the Kinetica Bloco? How are you doing music now? Um, well, in the walking projects that we do, we don't have so much of music because um, it's more walking and storytelling. But what we've been doing, um, we, in 2019, we started a carnival in Tilbury. And because um, Tilbury used to have a carnival, yeah. uh, like one of those English yeah. carnivals. Yeah support with all those floats so we kind mm. of did and there was this guy who's an ex-docker called les mm. and he was like ali ali i know you've done carnival you're gonna bring carnival <laughs> back to tilbury and he was on and on i was like no 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 i'm done with carnival no no <laughs> so we did this amazing um tilbury carnival um two years ago yeah. and you might remember that um well you will know that tilbury is a place that windrush arrived so um actually Tilbury, I like to think, is the birthplace of Notting Hill Carnival because it's where Kitchener arrived. And when Kitchener arrived on that boat, he sang London is the place for me. Yeah. So it's kind of that's kind of Tilbury's got that kind of connection to Carnival. Although I can tell you there are no Caribbean community in Tilbury. In it's Tilbury, a lot of West African yeah. So when mm. I try and say to people in Tilbury, oh yeah, this is the birthplace of Carnival, they don't understand it. Mm. But when I went to London and I met Elemu, I met Ansel, and I was, he's like, what are you doing, Ali? I mean, we never see you. What are you doing? I said, I'm doing Tilbury Carnival. He's like, oh, my God, that's brilliant. So mm. I'm going to say, watch the Tilbury space. And so what I'm doing this year, which I'm super excited about, because mm. I was like, really, we need a new song, which is Tilbury is the place for me. We need a new Calypso. Mm -hmm. So I've got Anthony Joseph to mm. come and work with young people in Tilbury to rewrite the, the London is the place for me. And Reuben Fox... <laughs> To write the music and the blocko to play it so there's a such a legacy there um i can't wait so 
Um, July the 25th, Tilbury is a place for me, New Calypso for the UK. Wow, that's that's brilliant. You know what? I find it very exciting when I start seeing young kids because you know I I knew Ruben uh when Matt was still alive when he was a little kid. Yeah. When I had a conversation with Claudia, which we put it last week, he was telling me all these things that uh Ruben is doing. He's been going to New York, invited by big mega stars and everything. So when I see mm. things like this, it's it just makes it people like you. It's worthwhile to be putting energy into sort of like really encouraging the young people to to be to do what these arts that we tend to be ignored. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, it's really really powerful. And, you know, Tamsin was on there. We had the Zoom with Tamsin and Ruben and Anthony Joseph and Marlon, who does the steel pan. Yeah. So it will be a steel pan section and and. For all the people that are in Thorough, then, you know, they don't know all that history, but we're getting, oh my God, what would, yeah. Matt would be so excited to think yeah. that Ruben is rewriting yeah. London yeah. is a place for me in Tilbury. Right. So now this is stuff that I've been actually been, you know, as usual, I just check and research stuff. And I saw this stuff and I'm like, yeah, that's what I want for Jankanu. Because, you know, I don't know if you've seen it, Jankanu, we are showing how to do this, how to do that. And also anything that seems to be natural, recycled or, you know, something that looks after environment we are keen on. I saw this on your on your page and i want to find out what are you doing? What's happening there? Wait, did you go back to India and then you're working with these people? What's happening, Ali? So what's happening is really exciting. So most of you who, if you know me, will know that um, I'm most famous for painting silk, whether I'm painting silk for carnival or walking around with flags. That's what I do, and we've still been doing a lot. So when we did uh, this big project in 2017, which was called Silk River, it was about um, connecting the River Thames with the River Hooghly in West Bengal. Mm -hmm. I was like, and I was trying to put together the project, and I was going, you know, it was part of the India-UK cultural year, and I went, and Korak said to me, we've got to go to Mashidabad because that's where the Battle of Plassey was, and we've got to do, tell all that story. And we had to drive in one of those trucks back for about 12 hours. I was like, why are we going to go up to Mashidabad? <laughs> and then Korak said, oh, yeah, they weave silk in Mashidabad. I was like, what? Why didn't you tell me? So I was like, we've got to work with Mashidabad silk because we, we shouldn't be doing Chinese silk in India because we're going to cause a, a ruckus, you know, so we have to mm -hmm. find this. So we found the weavers, and Shidaban used to be really famous for silk, and that's what it, Bengal made its wealth. Oh, and okay. that's one of the reasons why the Battle of Plassey happened, so that, that the English could start trading. Because they had stopped weaving that silk until Silk River came along. They were weaving mixed silk with Korean stuff and all that. So now it's like, no, 100% Bengal silk. So in fact, next week we're about to place our fourth order to those weavers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it fits even more than you might have thought it did with John Canoe. So it's real sustainable economy. Brilliant. Um, so what's so that everybody out there, if you're using silk, come to us and save the weavers. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening there? Um, so he's weaving that this piece of silk. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So, that's so this is use. in the village. In yeah. the it's called Islampur, yeah. uh, and it's in uh, the north of West Bengal. And this guy is hand weaving the silk. And it's all handmade, isn't it? It's nothing, no, no machine bought from somewhere. There's no machine. So from the cocoons, they have to sort of uh, take the women, take the thread from each silk cocoon. Mm -hmm. And then with that other photograph you showed was winding it on so you get it into a place where you can thread it on the loom. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really involved. And I never will paint a meter of silk with disrespect again because I know how much effort has gone to every single meter that we use. Right now. So it's like, you know... It makes me respect what we're doing with the silk mm, um, mm, even mm. more. And yeah. I mean, you can see it. it's just like really thick and vibrant. The colors are really amazing. Mm, mm. Everything is environmental friendly. So you telling me that you're actually coming up with another angle on the silk side of things. And that's really, really good news for, for what we're trying to do with Giancarlo. So we would keep on listening to you, we'll keep on chasing and see what you are up to.